Um, I'll start off with a brief introduction of uh, Biobest. So Biobest is a company founded by Ronald de Jonge and was the first bumblebee producer for agricultural pollination purposes. And uh, it did not take long before uh, it moved into uh, IPM and started producing macro and microbials, such as uh, Macrolophus or Asparello, to combat diseases and pests in horticulture. And since beneficials alone are not the entire solution, but strategies keep needing updates and new pests keep popping up, Biobest has always strived to give the best in class advice in order to get the most out of these beneficials. But we believe that, like in many other uh, sectors and areas, an important next step will be data driven solutions and decision making. So today I want to highlight the opportunities this aspect may have in IPM programs for cut flowers. Now, the pest we will be speaking about today is Quercetaxis halcitis. Um, it's also called the uh, tomato looper or the golden twin spot. And I'm going to speak particularly about Quercetaxis in gerberas, <clears throat> but rest assured, do know that um, the same principles of what I'm going to tell you could also apply for, let's say, false cutting moth problems in uh, roses or gypsophila or beet armyworm problems in chrysanthemum or cabbage leaf rollers in uh, Astromeria, for example. So, uh, um, but we'll focus on uh, Chrysothaxis in, in gerberas um, as a case, let's say. So I propose that uh, without further ado, we dive right into this topic. Now, I'm sure most of you are uh, already familiar with the uh, Chrysodexis, um, the golden twin spot. It's a highly polyphagous moth whose caterpillars primarily feed on uh, foliage, but uh, may also do so on a uh, fruit or even internally in legumes. And in many countries, it's considered uh, a very important lepidopteran pest. It is uh, a pest in alfalfa, clover, corn, artichokes, sweet pepper even, uh, but also field fruits, vegetables, uh, and ornamental plants like gerberas, epiasterum, ficuses. And I have <clears throat> put together a few numbers that I want to go through with you. Now, you don't have to remember everything of this, but this gives you an overview of the life cycle, of the, the, the life phases let's say, stages of Chrysodiaxis. And <clears throat> what is important to note here is that you see how short the life cycle can get if the temperature reaches 25 degrees. At 20, the life cycle lasts about 150 days, which is about 70 days when it's 5 degrees warmer. So this really shows you how um, quickly generations can develop. Another aspect that makes Chrysodaxis a difficult pest to control is that it's a uh, pretty reproductive, laying about two to 300 eggs in its lifetime. And it doesn't lay eggs in, in clusters, but rather very widespread through the crop in two, three, but often one egg. So um, it spreads really, really quickly. And also here you can see how the temperature also really can promote the egg hatchability. Now let's take a look at the damage that Chrysodexis can cause. We already spoke about um, Chrysodexis damaging the leaves and the foliage, uh, but in uh, yeah, more severe infestations, uh, damage to the fruit and the flowers are also not uncommon. And uh, it's, it can be particularly hard to, to find the first life stage as well, because, uh, well, as you can see here, it's uh, uh, pretty well, well camouflaged, uh, the larvae. So, um, yeah, the first, the first instar is, is difficult to find. And one of the other factors that is really um, characteristic to ornamentals is the low damage threshold. Um, in ornamentals, the cosmetic value of a plant or a flower is very important, and therefore the tolerance of the amount of moths that we can have in a greenhouse is uh, 
is really low. Now, how do we commonly scout for moths? I'm sure you're familiar with most of these practices. Sticky traps, rolls are often used to um, scout for the adults and uh, delta and pheromone traps, uh, as well as UV lamps are also uh, aimed at attracting the adults, not only scouting them, but also yeah, disrupting their, their life cycle. And um, crop scouting is mostly done for um, finding the caterpillars. But nevertheless, we see that we're often still too late in detecting moths in time. And a single moth left unnoticed and uncontrolled can therefore already have a, a pretty big impact later on. So, a brief summary of the problem. The problem is that Chrysodiaxis is often detected too late, after which it may have already done quite some, well, some, some substantial damage. And the late detection is also likely to result in a large subsequent population. So it will be difficult to control, um, well, let's say a, a, a next generation with Bacillus thuringiensis products because these generally work better on younger instars and lower population levels. And if the grower chooses to correct with a, well, let's say a heavier chemical, it can damage the rest of his IPM program. So yeah, then you're already basically um, running behind the ball. Other factors are um, that adult moths, uh, yeah, the Chrysodiaxis is nocturnal, so the moths fly around, let's say outside work hours, which um, sometimes makes them uh, under detected and therefore underestimated. And I already mentioned that in general, there is a low tolerance for moth presence. So there is clearly a need for an early detection and a real time monitoring to get a better notion of what is happening in the greenhouse. Well, we believe that this is uh, where POTS comes in. Um, just a, a few sentences about POTS company in general. It's a, it's a Dutch company. It's a high-tech startup, which mainly focuses at um, high-tech solutions for uh, pest control in horticulture. And BioBest and POTS have partnered up and uh, to put the, the, the POTS to good use. All right, so what is POTC? POTC is a, um, basically consists of uh, two parts. The first part is a base station, which is the size of a, of a football. And this base station contains a camera, which you can see here, a camera to detect moths flying past. And it also uh, contains an uh, um, uh, yeah, it also is the, the, the processor for the gathered data and uh, also has a chip in it, enabling it to send the data to the server using 4G. So it does not work on Wi-Fi. So it's no Wi-Fi needed. The second part, which you can see here below, is an LED module. And this LED module illuminates the uh, moths when they're flying by in the night. So uh, also at night, POTS is able to register moths flying by. And because it omits uh, infrared light, the, the moths themselves do not uh, perceive this. So it's not, they're not actively attracting them nor disrupting their normal behavior. So the procedure is uh, relatively simple. It's a plug and play principle. One can, um, well, one, mainly needs uh, a post and a power outlet post to attach the devices to and a power outlet well to feed the device's power which takes approximately uh, 15 minutes so it's a relatively uh, quick installation well to get a good sample of the, what's happening in the greenhouse also if it's a large greenhouse uh, generally we um, recommend one pot c system per hectare and the best that it has in scope um, as of yet, well, you can see these uh, below. Some very essential uh, pests uh, are already um, able to be registered as, uh, as well, uh, like uh, Tuta absoluta, but also, uh, of course, Chrysodiaxis, Dupogelia, Opogona. And this list is updated regularly. 
So the system gets better and better at recognizing and distinguishing between different moth species. And um, therefore, it is also possible to update these POTS devices remotely. So it gets better and better at recognizing more species and um, it can be updated from a distance. So as a grower, you do not have to do anything for this. So let's take a look at what the POTS actually sees. On the left, you see what the camera sees and on uh, the right, you see what it registers. This is um, in different crops. So in the left, you basically see what the camera sees and on the right, you see that based on the size of the moth flying by and based on the pattern that it makes in the air, it is determined which species it is. Show it to you uh, one more time. And all these videos and uh, registrations are gathered in an online dashboard. Let's take a look how this dashboard looks. This is a brief overview of the dashboard, and you can uh, access this uh, by your browser um, from any from any place, uh, basically. And um, there are a few things that are uh, important to mention at the, at the dashboard. Here you find the number of counted flights. You find um, the, the, the hours of the highest moth activity. Uh, you find trend lines uh, and you can even um, browse and find the exact moth flying by. So you can even uh, see the exact video like we just did if you're really interested in what was flying by at 3 a.m. in the morning, for example. You will also see an overview of your different systems if you have, um, yeah, if you have different systems in your greenhouse and you can search for a specific species. So if you're only interested in your Dupogelia flying by, you can search for Dupogelia. And if you want to see, let's say, the total moth activity, that's also possible. Now, what is it is? So what is it that this data is actually telling us? One of the things this data can tell us is when we actually have the first appearance of the moth in the greenhouse. I think this is a, a nice picture that um, illustrates really well what the POTS here has already detected in, um, I think, the 10th of February, compared to the population that was here noticed by the grower. So the POTS, this, yeah, the POTS uh, shows you um, when moth presence is being registered for the first time. And this can make a, a huge difference because as you can see, a small population undetected can result in quite a large second generation. And from this point on, you're already, well, playing catch up as a grower. It furthermore tells us at what time the moths are actually active. So here we see the number of countings plotted against the time over, yeah, during the day. And as you can see, Chrysodixis mostly active from 6 to 8 p.m. And um, you can also see the proportion of every, let's say, camera, the data gathered per POTS camera. Well, this is um, also interesting because moths yeah, per species may differ quite substantially in their activity times and yeah, growers and advisors may not always be familiar with the, the peak activity times of every moth species. So yeah, I think uh, the dashboard also really gives you some, some nice insights in uh, activity times. This is a different uh, moth uh, that I also wanted to show you just to, you know, to, to share the contrast with you. Uh, this is an activity time from uh, Opegona, the banana moth. And as you can see here, 
it is completely, it looks completely different being mostly active from suit to four. What else does this data tell us? Um, the data also shows us over the course of the entire year, how your moth population has been developing. So this is, I think, also pretty interesting because it gives you the opportunity to reflect on last season's data and see yeah, how your actions have actually uh, affected or not the moth population. And I think that is even better illustrated in this picture. So <clears throat> this also shows you the influence of seasonal and climatic conditions on the moth development. So you see here that the peaks, let's say the generations, are wider apart from each other than in the summer months. Because of the increasing temperature, you see that in the summer months, the generation peaks uh, creep a bit to each other. And so this gives you a, a nice, I think, uh, overview of uh, the, the effect of uh, climatic conditions on your moth population. Like I already showed you, it also shows you where, as in which camera detects uh, most moths. So perhaps uh, you will discover specific places in your greenhouse in which moth activity generally uh, starts or is highest. And the dashboard also prevents short term and long term trend lines because daily countings can differ quite substantially and can be very variable. So these trend lines make it a bit more clear for you as a user to see which direction your moth population is uh, heading into so that you can base your, your actions uh, on the trends rather than on variable daily countings. So just to uh, reiterate a few of the advantages of BOTS, of BOTS-C, you can check the web-based dashboard from anywhere. It's a browser-based. You can log in from uh, any device with your credentials. BOTS-C provides you with an early detection of the first flight or an early detection of the first pressure, which enables you to act quickly and adequately. You can continuously track your population development um, to see what is happening in your greenhouse at any given time of day. And you can learn more about the moth species or the behavior, the life cycles, um, how the moth population is, is behaving in your greenhouse and uh, about the times of day they're active at. The trend lines provide you uh, not only an opportunity to uh, predict what's going to happen, but also to reflect on last season um, and uh, uh, well to reflect on how, uh, like I already mentioned, uh, specific actions or sprays or LVM treatments that you've done, how yeah, whether they were actually effective. So it provides also a very useful tool for feedback and to improve your next year's strategy. And lastly, um, it also saves some on labor and administration. Um, no more scouting uh, data lying around on a piece of paper waiting to be entered in Excel, but everything that is being registered is directly uploaded to the dashboard uh, immediately. So also some uh, progression in efficiency. All right, so. What are the added, yeah, what is the added value of these advantages to IPM? Like I mentioned, an early detection facilitates an early response and green products like Delphin or other uh, Bacillus thuringiensis products, they just work better on younger instars and lower population levels. So the earlier you detect the population, the more effect your treatment can have. as you see here. 
when POTS C had already detected the first activity at the 10th of February, conventional scouting methods detected the moth the 17th of April, which is five weeks difference, which is a complete yeah, new generation of POTS. So it yeah, POTS C really gives you uh, a, a better edge uh, over the, the population development. Further, furthermore, the awareness of activity time. I have already spoken about this, but I want to give you a few examples from practice. So a certain gerba grower always used to spray in the, at the end of the afternoon or even more early in the afternoon. But POTS and the dashboard showed that actually moth started being active from 6 p.m. onwards. And um, there is a discrepancy between the time of spraying or LVMing and the time of peak activity. And there's even a more extreme example of this. And this is, um, it's not Crassodaxis, but it's Apagona. But just to, to show you the principle, here the grower used to um, do an LVM treatment at the end of the afternoon and he aired the greenhouse at 11 in the evening to um, well to, yeah to to clean there again so that the next morning the workers could start in time uh, working again in the greenhouse however the data from pot c showed that uh, the peak activity was at 3 or 4 a.m and that was after the greenhouse had already been aired so uh, so this really shows you that the timing is crucial in, in what we do, and uh, there's a lot to win there. So, spoken about early detection, I've spoken about activity time, trends. Um, trends really help predict short and long term actions. So, the trends will show you whether populations are, are going down or going up and whether the actions you are taking are having an effect. Um, they also help to evaluate last season's results and uh, to design next season's strategy. So yeah, you always have a, a kind of um, track record on, on what you're doing um, and uh, yeah, not, well, not reinventing the wheel every season. Another aspect is uh, detail and consistency. Countings are not dependent on human errors in POTS, and um, I don't have to tell you that scouting results can sometimes <laughs> heavily depend on uh, who it is that is actually scouting. And uh, that, yeah, that there is a, uh, can be a difference between methods of scouting uh, up between people. So having an up-to-date map with this scouting data helps you to be up to date as possible um, by always the same scouting method. And if allowed, advisors of the growers can also keep track of the dashboard so that they're also aware of the moth activity remotely and if needed, could even advise remotely. Another advantage is um, that they are furthermore better informed before visiting a grower and may offer more adequate solutions when they are there and not hear the latest news when they're there. And this is an interesting one um, because perhaps not every grower is checking the dashboard every day, completely understandable. So uh, a feature that is coming soon is an alert when uh, thresholds are exceeded. And these thresholds can be set by the grower themselves. And when these uh, thresholds are exceeded, let's say first activity or yeah, countings between, uh, countings above a certain, a certain value, then uh, the grower can uh, get a notification on the, his uh, mobile device so uh, that he is alerted about something that is happening moth related in the greenhouse. So 
basically these are um, the aspects, the added values that we see for Pat C in uh, in IPM. And yeah, basically Pat is a very valuable tool to help improve your timing. Uh, timing is crucial in everything that we do, and especially in crops that rely heavily on Bacillus thuringiensis treatments. So Pat really is a um, uh, works really well in synergy with BT products to make the timing as good as possible and um, as uh, and increase the uh, efficacy as uh, as best as possible. Now we're heading a bit into the end of the presentation, but I wanted to share with you some experiences that um, uh, growers that are using pots. Um, yeah, have let us know. And uh, it is interesting because uh, everybody sees a different value sometimes in a, in a, in the same product or uh, uses it differently. So um, yeah, a few statements that we've received. Some growers say I've managed a longer suppression of moths with BT products. And yeah, this is interesting because they're using the same products the same amount of times but because their timing is better and they are uh, applying it uh, right when they expect or even see the first uh, moth on the dashboard, they can get the most out of the treatments. Other growers mentioned that it's easier to check the, to easier to check the digital dashboard rather than to count the UV trapping labs. Um, yeah, we also see that growers are very um, open in sharing their data with their advisor. So advisors are regularly checking the dashboards as well to uh, keep an eye out. And some growers say that they use the dashboard and the trend lines to check whether their LVM treatments are uh, reducing the moth population in the greenhouse. We have also um, Receive some feedback from advisors. And they say, well, using POTC, we faced fewer unpleasant surprises last season. Nevertheless, they need more consecutive seasons to evaluate. Um, it's a, a, an interesting, an interesting one. I really like this one because yeah, it's exactly what those trend lines are for. They provide a way to reflect on last season's strategy to see which active, to see which actions have been most effective. So this advisor really sat down with the grower at the end of the season to, uh, yeah, to to review and to evaluate last season. And the last one, which I think is perhaps the most uh, indicative is the value of pot C could be further increased if we train ourselves to regularly check the dashboard before we find the first moths in the UV traps. Um, there are uh, still uh, yeah, many growers and advisors that start to check the dashboard as soon as they found uh, the first moths in the UV lamp. Um, but like I showed you, pot C is excellent at finding moths before we do, so we need to get it in our system um, and to adapt our behavior to using these devices to actually get the most out of Betsy and thus, um, yeah, achieve the highest added value to our, uh, to our IPM practices. So my take home messages for you is um, effective scouting can drastically improve IPM programs. We all know it. We don't always do it, but it's a uh, key in uh, in IPM. And we believe that POTS C can aid in this early detection of pests and thus forming a nice synergy with green products and increasing their performance through a timely application. And in the end, we think that using these devices and these strategies contributes to um, our residue free long term strategy. And with that, I want to thank everyone for uh, his and her attention.